Hey guys, Eckhart Slaughter here. Hello and welcome to Star Wars Starship Versus, the series where I take two ships suggested by you, put them head to head, and try to predict which one would come out on top. It's hard to believe, but today is actually day seven of the week of Star Wars Starship Versus, which means that there has been a new episode for the past six consecutive days and also today. I initially intended to make this week go until Sunday, but that's eight days and really, I also need a break. But don't worry, I'll be back with new episodes on Monday of this series and the other content that I produce. Before I get into today's episode, I just want to take a second to give a brief fundraising update. As most of you know, I've been collecting money to try to upgrade my hardware, especially my microphone. I want to give a very special thank you to everyone who's donated since my last video. So the first is Darth Max. Thank you very much, Darth. I actually included you in the screenshot at the end of last video, but it was after I was done recording. So thank you again. Thank you, Nolan K. Dinger, who wanted to see how badly I'd butcher his name. I'm not sure exactly how poorly I did. I hope he lets me know. Thank you very much to Justin Roberts. Also to the people who've donated anonymously. There's been a few of you, so thank you to everyone who's done that. Thank you to John Albertone. This is actually his second donation. He previously donated anonymously and he's given me a fun idea for a star wars who would win battle thank you to alan haskane who gave me a good idea for a star wars starship versus episode and also left me a nice message as did robert giuseppe thank you very much robert everyone who's donated has really blown me away with their generosity as have you in the comments who've said that you'd like to donate but don't have the financial means to do so as i've said a few times i'm raising money for luxury items this is not a life or death situation this is me trying to improve my youtube channel so if you don't have the desire or the means to donate don't feel bad whatsoever. If you do want to donate, you can go to gofundme.com slash Eckhart's Ladder or visit the link down in the description. If you donate $20 or more, you get a custom Star Wars Who Would Win video, which I'll upload to the channel. To the rest of my viewers, don't worry. I'm only going to be making these videos once a week and the vast majority of the suggestions will still come from the comments. So don't feel like you need to donate to have your matchup get made. Speaking of user suggested matchups, thank you to Admiral Supreme for the idea behind today's video. We're taking the CR90 Rebel Block runner and putting it against everyone's favorite little spaceship that could, the Hammerhead Corvette. Both of these ships were found at the Rebel Battle at Scarif and played similar roles. A CR-90 named the Tantive IV was the first ship ever seen in a Star Wars movie. Well, Hammerhead Corvettes have been featured in Star Wars Rebels and Rogue One and were based off a cruiser design from Knights of the Old Republic and the Old Republic era. So we're going to be taking these two ships and comparing them in three different categories. Firepower, defensive systems, and fighter complement, although neither of these ships actually carry fighters typically, so we're going to ignore the third one. However, we're looking at this map matchup overall, when we'll also be considering intangibles to try to figure out which ship is holistically the best. The rules are simple, this is a one on one matchup and we're focusing on the ships, so the pilots are presumed to be of equal skill. Also, usually we take these ships as they ordinarily existed without any upgrades, however, there are several versions of the Hammerhead, so we'll take the one featured at the Battle of Scarif. Let's start with weaponry, and this is one of the areas where the differences between various Hammerhead classes becomes apparent. The Hammerhead as featured in Star Wars Rebels is very lightly armored, it has only three laser cannons. Although it's not immediately obvious, the Hammerheads in Rogue One are upgraded. Attached to the sides of the ship are two modules, each of which have laser cannons on the top and the bottom for four extra weapons in total. So is this combat version of the Hammerhead now well armed? No, it's not. Laser cannons are not very effective for fighting against larger ships. Think of, for example, the guns on the Millennium Falcon. Those are quad laser turrets. Those are great against starfighters, but not against larger enemies like capital ships. Those are also quad laser cannons and upgraded ones at that. The ones on the Rogue One Hammerhead are only double laser cannons, and some of them appear to be quite small. The Hammerhead is not well designed for combat. It's got very few flat surfaces where turrets can be placed. Also, the front Hammerhead portion of the ship blocks the field of view for some of its turrets decreasing its effectiveness in certain areas. We see, for example, if the first ridge on the ship were extended, it could probably add a turbo laser or some sort of extra large weapon. However, that would probably take away from the speed of the ship, limiting its effectiveness in other ways. The Alliance likely took these hammerheads to Scarif to help protect their larger ships from fighters. Corvettes are often meant to serve in an escort role, and the anti-starfighter weaponry on the hammerhead make it effective in a very specialized way. Interestingly, the CR-90 is built in an opposite way, and instead of having laser cannons such that it would be specialized against fighters, it has large turbo lasers. The CR-90 has a dorsal and a ventral double turbo laser as well as four single turbo lasers on each side of the ship. The main cannons appear to be quite heavy and even the secondary ones look like they can pack a punch. 
The ship is well laid out for standard combat and can hit most targets ahead of it with both of its main cannons and at least two of its single cannons. However, due to the size of the engines, there was a blind spot in the back which could be exploited by a smart foe. Although the Hammerhead does have more weapons than the CR-90, with 7 against 6, it is much less well prepared for capital ship engagements. And the CR-90's turbolasers, and in particular its quad turbolaser, are much more effective for fighting against large ships. Just to put it simply, the CR-90 packs much more of a punch, so I'm going to give this category to the Rebel Blockade Runner. Let's now talk about defense, and the first thing I wanted to do when evaluating these two ships in this category was look at the size difference. However, unfortunately, the Hammerhead does not yet have an official size. However, there is a nice scene near the end of the Battle of Scarif where you can clearly see the two ships next to each other. The Hammerhead is a little bit longer and a little bit bulkier than the Rebel Blockade Runner. While size and bulkiness often indicate durability, they're certainly not determinative, especially in the Star Wars universe where ships often use shielding technologies. So let's look at the feats of the two ships. The Hammerhead obviously rammed a Star Destroyer and not from close up, it didn't just nudge it and push it, it actually hit it at full speed. What's even more impressive is that the Lightmaker, which was the name of the Hammerhead which did this maneuver, was already badly damaged by the time it rammed the Star Destroyer. And it hit it, bounced off, and kept going. This, to me, is really impressive. But I don't really want to sleep on the Blockade Runner either. The Tanta IV took at least a dozen shots from the Star Destroyer at the beginning of A New Hope before its shields failed and it was disabled. This is impressive, and while the Empire was likely trying to disable the ship rather than destroy it, it still tells me that its shields were pretty impressive. Still, it doesn't quite stand up to what the Lightmaker does, ramming another capital ship. Very impressive, and I have to give this category to the Hammerhead. Now is what I would normally do fighters. All I want to say here is that while the CR-90 could be outfitted to carry two A-Wings or another fighter on its side, it didn't typically do so, so I'm not going to consider any here. Alright, so let's now look at intangibles, and there's really only one that I want to mention here, and that's the speed of the Hammerhead. As I mentioned, the Hammerheads we're considering in this video were upgraded for the Battle of Scarif. The first thing done was was the adding of the weapons modules, which I already mentioned, but the Rebel Alliance also added on a fourth engine and moved the position of the secondary gun. Going back to my theory that the Hammerheads were meant to screen against fighters and protect large capital ships, this makes a lot of sense. You want a ship that is nimble, agile, and able to keep up with other fighters. And we see that these engines are exceptionally powerful, I mean, the Hammerhead literally pushes a Star Destroyer into another one and through a shield gate. So these things are putting out a lot of energy and probably move the relatively small ship very quickly. I mean, I don't want to discount the CR-90 either. Its name is a blockade runner, it's got very large engines, it's pretty clearly fast. However, even briefly outrunning the Star Destroyer at the beginning of A New Hope is not as impressive as what the Hammerhead does in Rogue One. That, especially when combined with the Hammerhead's specialized, in my opinion, anti-fighter role, tell me that it must be a faster ship. Let's take that knowledge and go now into the actual matchup. We have first the Hammerhead, a ship that looks very bulky, almost like a transport ship with some rockets and anti-starfighter weapons attached to it, going against the smaller but kind of more agile looking and more heavily armed CR-90 Corvette. So the question is this, which ship wins? I'm going to keep this one short because in my mind, the Hammerhead is totally inappropriate for this kind of one-on-one -on -one large ship engagement. Let's be clear, both of these ships are Corvettes, however one of them is clearly meant to screen against fighters, that's of course the Hammerhead with its laser cannons, while one is meant to directly attack larger ships, that of course is the CR-90 with its turbo lasers. Only one of these ships is operating in its specialized position, that's the CR-90, and its turbo lasers just give it too big of an advantage here, and those double turbo lasers especially are just too powerful for the Hammerhead to deal with, high durability or not. The Hammerhead is going to have serious difficulties injuring the CR-90. Its lasers are, well, fast, quite weak, and will not be able to successfully penetrate the ship's shields. I will admit, I have assumed that the extra weapons added to the Hammerhead during the Battle of Scarif are laser cannons and not turbo lasers, but I think that only makes sense. I find it hard to believe that the ship would have the energy capacity to support not only four extra turbo lasers, but also an extra engine when it wasn't designed to house those things. Also, turbo lasers are usually quite large and distinctive, while these turrets are quite small. I mean, I literally had to pause Rogue One to make sure that it did in fact have turrets on the top of it. Even so, the double turbo lasers on the CR-90 are just much heavier and like look at the size of them than anything on the Hammerhead. Finally, I don't think the extra speed of the Hammerhead will give it an advantage either. The CR-90 does have a weak spot right behind the ship, but both of these ships are speedy Corvettes, so the little bit of extra speed by the Hammerhead is not going to be a big enough of a game changer to really change the outcome. Which is that I award this matchup to the CR-90. 
its heavy weapons are just too much for the hammerhead. I think the alliance blockade runner wins 9.5 times out of 10. Truly, I believe the only chance that the hammerhead has is if it can ram the other ship, but space is big and both of these ships are very fast, so it will somehow have to disable it first and it just doesn't have the weapons to do so. But I would love to hear what you guys think. Take a second right now and vote in the upper right hand corner and also tell me down in the comments, did I make a mistake? Am I wrong about the guns of the hammerhead or is there something else you'd like to let me know? Don't forget to, of course, put in your suggestion for next time's video and if you have any questions or anything else, feel free to ask them. If you want to get further involved in the community, you can join the Discord. Discord, which is now almost 200 members strong and follow me on Twitter. Also, if you want to help improve the quality of my videos, you can go to gofundme.com slash Eckhart's Ladder and leave me a little money. But of course, that's always optional and I'll be here making videos regardless. So thank you very much for watching guys and hey, as always, may the force be with you.